afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our very important discussion ahead of the ANC's policy conference. My name is Conita Hunter. I'm the assistant editor for Politics and Opinions at News 24. Joining me today uh, is a panel of my esteemed colleagues. I'm joined by political reporter at News 24, Junior Kumalo, News 24 writer at large, Carol Payton, and assistant editor for In Depth and Investigations, Peter Dodoy. Thank you gentlemen and lady <laughs> for joining us today. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. I think we have a very important uh, hour ahead of us. We have a lot to unpack, Peter. The ANC is hosting its policy conference. It's traditional for it to discuss policy positions six months ahead of its elective conference where the final decisions about the party's positions and resolutions is taken. We know over the years, Carol, that these, this, this policy uh, uh, conference serves almost a primary-like function within the ANC in, in, in determines the directions of the leadership race in the party and the mood of the party ahead of its elective conference. And Junior, I think the, uh, the, the, the main thing that comes to my mind as we you know, begin coverage of this policy conference that's expected to begin on Friday morning is it's going to be a true test of how much real support President Cyril Ramaphosa has in his bid for a second term as party president. Carol, I want to start with you. How serious is the ANC up until this point in reformulating, in analyzing, in, in debating policy positions? Just on the back of, is this, any, is this really about um, the policy positions of the ANC or not? Well, we always have in the ANC, we always have proxy um, fights and debates. So the economic policy um, debates which happen in the, in the Economic Commission are, are, um, are always very intense, have, have been very intense in the past. So, so you'll get something like nationalization or expropriation becoming the central topic of the conference. Um, because those are actually proxy fights for the different factions. And this year, I think it's less intense on, on that front. But I still do think that there's a contest going to be contestation about the general direction that um, President Ramaphosa has been trying to push the economy in. And, and so, you know, you seldom get, um, you know, to answer your question directly, you seldom get really effective debate. You often get sort of sloganeering and sort of factionalism and, 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 and so on. But, but um, I do think that this time there might be a little bit more nuanced debate and a little bit less um, sort of factional positions. Um, but yes, I think the general direction, the, the, the participation of the private sector in, in the economy, especially mm. in the energy sector, which Ramaphosa has just announced, um, I think will be a, a topic of debate. So that general, that, that general issue is, is definitely going to be important. Peter Dutoy, I mean, what is the symbolism of the ANC discussing policy? I mean, if, if you're an ordinary person in the public, what does it matter to you of these 2,000 people ga gathering at NASREC uh, for three days discussing policy? What, what should it mean? Look, it's, uh, Carol's right. Um, the, and, and, and in your introduction as well, Juanita, the, the, the proxy fights that we that we see at conferences ahead of, of an ANC elective conference, whether it's the midterm National General Council, which did not take place this time around, whether it is the, uh, the policy conference, is a, is a staging area for whatever comes after that. And the focus in the ANC almost always is on the, the, uh, how to attain power and how to retain power. Uh, who uh, are the individuals running the show um, and which faction is in control? That's ultimately what it's all about. It should be, like Carol said just now, it should be about the direction of the country. We have a myriad of very serious problems which, which need uh, creative and dynamic solutions. The economy should be front and center in every single debate that we have in this country at the moment. And you'd, you'd want these debates um, to be nuanced, uh, to, be, to, be, to be intelligent and, and significant debates. So for normal South Africans, you know, we, we should, normal South Africans might be jaded uh, about the continuous internecine warfare that we see in the ANC. But this is an important conference because whatever, uh, in theory at least, whatever policies the ANC formulate here, 
uh, when it goes forward to the national conference and gets adopted at the end of the year, that eventually is fed into government programs, into legislation, into the into the parliamentary process, and becomes um, you know it 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 will affect all of our lives. So it is something that we need to take heed of, and we need to try and understand it as far as we can. Um, the problem is that it's so difficult. Um, to get beyond the sloganeering, mm. to get beyond the different factions wanting a slice of the pie, wanting to position their candidates for the end of the year, um, that important debates, as we've seen in the past, like nationalization, uh, what to do uh, about land reform, which remains a, a very contested topic in our political terrain. We don't often see those debates um, uh, being conducted in a nuanced enough way and then being taken forward into legislation or government policy. But, you know, your question is, uh, you know, South Africans should take heed of this because whatever policy is decided or uh, formulated here might become government policy in future. Junior, talk to me about what the conference is going to look like, just just logistically. What What, what is it that's, that's expected from this weekend? Um, so from the start, uh, the chairperson, the ANC national chairperson, Mr. Kweri Mantashi, is the one who's expected to open the... Um, the program um, tomorrow morning and he's expected to give just a brief account of what the ANC, the current administration has done for the past five years um, and then the president is also supposed to speak. Um, we saw him speaking in KZN mm -hmm. and that was a very interesting um, uh, setting to speak in because it was very uh, volatile for him mm. uh, hence he came out and he was flirting with the crowd and all the delegates mm. that didn't want him to be there so this time around we expect the president to be a bit tough on how he um, addresses the crowd so it's um, a, a different terrain where he's expected to speak so um, we expect yeah, a, a different um, president to come out and be strong. He's the one who started, uh, when he got into power, it was on the ticket of reform. So we're expecting him to um, stick to that and discuss uh, what has been um, happening within the party in terms of that reform, which we haven't seen much of, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. I want to I wanna take it a step back from the policy conference to what we've been seeing uh, before this. Mm. There's been a number of regional and provincial conferences of the ANC that, that play a significant role in what happens this weekend and what happens in December. The last one that you've covered, and you've been covering a lot of them, Junior, mm -hmm. has been the ANC KZN conference. Yes. And the ANC KwaZulu Natal conference saw two big outcomes. The first is the incumbent leadership, Sishle Zikalala and 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 Dumisen uh, Ntuli, and that faction of the ANC were were removed, mm. and 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 there was a, a, a victory of the so-called Taliban faction. You 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 opined about that today, uh, uh, Peter. But but the point is that so 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 you had that change, which so so effectively an anti-Ramaphosa uh, leadership uh, um, of the ANC uh, in KwaZulu Natal won that. But there, there was there was also for the for the first time uh, uh, a a sort of indication of what an anti Ramaphosa lobby in the ANC is going to look like. So anti step aside. So what is a step aside? It's obviously mm. that policy of the ANC that Ramaphosa have pushed through, which is if you are charged, if you're criminally charged, uh, you cannot uh, contest a position in the party, and if you are in a position, you would have to step aside from your position, right? So we will we'll talk about step aside a bit later, Carol and Junior. But the point that I'm making is that only just last week did we see cracks in, in, in the president's uh, 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 um, ambition for a second term. Yes. And so how much of that is going to play out in the policy, in the, in the nuance? Uh, talk, talk to me about what you heard and saw at the ANC KZN conference. Um, so you are right that uh, the faction that supported the president uh, lost, and that was like a, a serious thrashing. Um, with Sihle not even uh, appearing in the additional PEC members, which is almost unheard of for someone who's an incumbent and who's also supported by the sitting president, who's most likely going to get a second term. So um, after that, the, the current leadership in the ANC um, went out and they spoke about the step-aside rule. They don't want to review it, they want it totally scrapped. So let's talk about the step-aside rule. Carol, this is, a, this is the proxy, the proxy this policy debate. Thing. Yeah. This is it for this for this time round. I think you know. Whereas before we had nationalisation, expropriation. You know, talk to me about how this how time is that a going to be debate? the stand. Which just, just explain to if someone it's doesn't it's know what how does it manifest? How does these proxy debates manifest? So the, itself? the proxy debates basically manifest where where factions have a different position on 
an issue. And, and, and that issue then becomes, it then becomes a case of like winning your, your position on that issue. And, a test um, of numbers, if you like. It's a test of numbers, exactly. So there's no, as we know, there's no voting or anything like that. But it certainly is um, the more noise you can make at the conference to give the sense that um, there is, um, you know, groundswell for this thing. I mean, remember last time when we had expropriation of, compens of, of mm. compensation, I mean, we even had fist flying, um, yes. which in the end sort of settled the debate. It was fine, you know, we're doing this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these, these things do tend to take centre stage and, and so you, I think you're absolutely right, uh, step aside is going to be it mm -hmm. this time round. So, um, so, so what is the position and what is the alternative to the position, Junior? So right now, step aside and it's also the ANC, um, Limpopo, the biggest, two biggest provinces of the ANC want it scrapped totally and then the Ramaphosa faction wants this to remain because that's their biggest instrument for reform within the party. Because the second term is based on the ticket of renewal, it's, it's, right? It's based on that. And um, so far he has gained um, support from the Eastern Cape, Free State, and um, Pumalang, whose uh, provincial um, committees have said that they, they want this to remain in place, which is also a bit tricky because the Free State and um, uh, the Mpumalang, the Free State right now is under administration. So the people that are leading that administration are Ramaphosa's uh, people. So whatever they say, uh, we can't take it, we need to take it with a uh, pinch of salt because the delegates on the ground might want a different outcome. So it's, it's a bit tricky in terms of the numbers mm -hmm. because the two biggest provinces are saying, let's deal away with this thing. And why, why would they want to say, let's, let's do away with it? Um, it's mainly because of the people that they want to contest at the national um, elective conference. Uh, most of these people want people who are criminally charged, like uh, Esma Khashule, to come back and contest uh, Zuelim Kize, who's not yet criminally charged, but who faces a lot of accusations, to also take part. So that's where the proxy happens, because they want these people to take part in the national elective conference as well. So right now, the only thing that can allow them to come in is this policy conference, because they can't call for a national, um, what's this, uh, the NGC. They to, can't to change call, the, yes, because it only has to happen within 30 months of the election yeah. of um, the president, which was two and a half years ago. So mm -hmm. they can't call mm -hmm. for that anymore. So the policy conference is where yeah. they can play around with this. And, and if you miss election at mm -hmm. the, at, to the NEC now, um, you've got, uh, because you're charged. Yeah. And, 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 and next, next year, the, the NPA doesn't drops the charges like, <laughs> like we see happening. Yeah. Um, then you're out of the NEC for five years. And I think that's, that's a strong argument to say, well, what about, but I mean, the very fact that you've got an organization debating um, whether people who are criminally charged should be allowed to be the public face of the organization is, is really a, a very, very direct comment mm. on, on the state of the ANC at the moment. Peter, I've long opined on the columns of News 24 about this entire step aside thing and, and it being this, this renewal ticket of, of Ramaphosa is PR. It's, it's effecti effectively what it had been is. You've been uh, very harsh, Kunika. Uh, <laughs> very harsh. <laughs> I have been. <laughs> Ramaphosa has once asked me why am I so angry, <laughs> but but the, the the point is that that it has no bearing on us as 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 ordinary citizens. If you choose to have someone who who is accused of attempted murder as a provincial treasurer of the ANC in Pomalanga, should not be our problem as as citizens. You do that at your own peril. We decide whether we want you or, or, or don't want you. What we need sure, to be interested yeah. in is you now have the keys to ESCOM. What are you doing with ESCOM? Mm -hmm. so, so, so the point that I'm, th I mean, that, that, that I'm making and, and, and asking you is that, I mean, have we, have we become so tolerant of a party that's just so inward looking and taking the country with it as it looks, be not looks at nothing else beyond itself? I think we've become less tolerant. I think the public certainly, okay. um, I think there's been a sea change over the last six months to a year. I think the, um, the troubles that we've had at ESCOM recently, load shedding, takes, takes the effects of mismanagement and state capture right into people's homes. You know, it's not something that's distant. It's not the Zondo Commission that sits at Empire on Hill uh, somewhere, you know, conducting interviews with alleged crooks day in and day out. It takes it into people's homes. So I think load shedding and ESCOM um, has certainly shattered any illusion that, that the ANC might have had um, that they can hang on um, with, without any consequences. Mm -hmm. I think that is starting to change. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen that 
in election results over the last couple of election cycles. Uh, and I think it's difficult for the ANC to keep things together. I think um, it's a massive problem for the ANC that people like Zandile Kumede, who is in, uh, uh, charged with something like 200 counts of corruption and fraud, um, is someone that is on leadership tickets at all. Mm. Um, you know, the ANC is unfortunately from top to bottom riven by individuals involved in corruption. More than 200 uh, ANC leaders have been named in the Zondo report. Now, yesterday, um, when uh, the ANC released their discussion document on, the sta on, on, on Zondo and state capture, you know, I thought it was, you know, th there were instances when you read that document where you think there might be some form of introspection, but then, you know, the very next paragraph says, uh, but look what happens in, in business. Look look what happened 30 years ago. Look what happened. You know, there's no sense of ownership of the problem. They don't admit mm, yeah. that they, they've got a serious and deep problem with corruption. But they argue that, you know, we but we identified corruption as a problem uh, when Khalema Motlante was Secretary General in 2007. Mm. Um, what happened after then? Then we ident re-identified the problem in 2012 in Mangaung. But that's and then problem. 2017 in Nazareth, the same problem stuck its, its head out again. So, so they've never been able to deal with corruption. And I do think South Africans are, by and large, seeing through um, the lies. I mean, mm. when, when the president on Monday mm. gave his speech mm. about the electricity crisis uh, um, plan, you know, the, the, re the reaction was much more muted than I thought it would have been. People are, you know, they simply don't believe yeah. anything or yeah. a lot what the president and the ANC are saying these days. So I think, I think there is a sea chase. I think people, are, uh, people aren't amenable to just sucking it up anymore. And I think, mm. and I think, and I think we, 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 you know, we've, over the last 20 years, at all these conferences, we've, been, we've, we've, we've become so used to um, the ANC being the only paradigm with which we can view we, society in yeah, the country. Yeah. I think that's changing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. can, can I say, Carol, that, that um, the ANC does one thing right, and is it, it, it diagnoses its own failures. Yeah, very well. Oh. Unlike <laughs> any other political party yeah, that yeah, we know. Yeah, very well, very honest, yes. And, and the, the point is, we often cling on to that in our coverage of, of the discussion mm. to say, the ANC concedes that it didn't do much on land reform. The ANC concedes that uh, you know uh, that that the setup of the Reserve Bank is not is not ideal. So we cling on to that. What we don't pay attention to is now what, mm. and 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 in the practicality of what the resolutions would look like. What, how, how do you so 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 it's not about um, you know the, the the broader discussion around whether or not there needs to be some poverty alleviation in the form of, of some grant, you know, the basic income mm, grant. Yeah. It's the practicality of, okay, we as the ANC believe that we're going to have a basic income grant for five to ten years based on affordability. This is going to be the criteria, and this is what government needs to implement. It's in that specifics that the ANC just cannot give possible solutions to these massive crises. Right. No, that's absolutely true, and, and I mean, apart from the fact that they have not addressed corruption in their own ranks, they haven't addressed the economy. I mean, they haven't mm. really, we've had 10 years of a stagnant economy. I mean, the, the, the population is growing faster than mm. the economy is growing, which means that, you know, on a per capita basis, we're all getting poorer. Mm. The country's getting poorer. And I, don't, see it. and I don't think that that's what, you know, Cyril Ramaphosa would have imagined and envisaged when he, when he came in. Um, and because he came in on this on this two on this twofold ticket, right? So it was this renewal uh, uh, promise, and the second thing was this bullish economic reform. I'm able to. I will, given mm. my business connects, I'm <laughs> going to bring all of this this mm. investment. In. And yes, COVID is a good excuse. But how do you think the president is going to justify to these two thousand delegates? that there's just not been any economic growth in, in, in his Yeah, first yeah, term. I mean, well, 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 luckily that he's probably not going to even be put on the spot about that, uh, mm. you know. <laughs> luckily for but, him. But he probably, you know, so, so, so that is really what he needs to explain and, and really what he needs to tackle. But, you know, the ANC delegates at that conference, as we were just saying, are, are probably interested in other things. Um, but, yeah, it, it, has not, it has not been a successful four years for, 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 for the president. Um, and he has he has been, I think, under some kind of misapprehension that he has a lot of time mm. to bring about these reforms. And, and so I you think saw the kicking the can down the yeah, road all the exactly. time. Exactly. So, and I think that as as Peter's saying, that 
there's a sense, there's a kind of overwhelming sense in society and it's getting through to them as well, that time is running out now. So um, things like a basic income grant and so on become the go-to because that is something, with the exception of the last iteration of the social um, the relief of distress grant, um, that is something that actually can be done. Give money to people, it can be done. Mm. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't solve the future and it doesn't, it doesn't make a better future for, mm. for South Africans, especially poor ones. I want to park the, the, the discussion around e economic policy because I think it's a lot that we need to unpack yeah. and we will unpack it in the days to come for now um, and, 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 and just revisit the conversation on corruption and the Zonda Commission. This policy conference comes uh, 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 following this voluminous <laughs> report of, of, of uh, Chief Justice Raymond Zondo where he basically spells out that the ANC was criminalized and used by a criminal entity to capture the state and, 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 and to, to, to loot from state coffers. And he makes some very, very, very damning findings, but also some interesting recommendations and, and, uh, 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 in his report uh, around the ANC Deployment Committee. The policy discussion documents of the ANC don't don't really, sh uh, you know, speak in tandem to the Zonda report. There are mm. certain themes that they pick up on. But I found it quite fascinating, Junior, that at the ANC KZN conference, there was, there was almost a rejection of the Zonda report. Uh, yes. Um, so wow. the new leadership just said that um, Zondo is being factional. Um, he's being used. So they just outright rejected it without even giving it uh, thought, I think. But also not just them. Um, the, the ANC has put up a task team to look into that commission led by Jeff Khadib. And what was shocking when he spoke about the, the recommendations, he said he has skimmed through that uh, that <laughs> report. He didn't say he has read the report. He said he has skimmed through that report. And this is the person tasked with the whole task team. And so that reminds me of, of, of Gwede Mantashe in, in the discussion around the, the recommendations around the ANC's deplo cadre deployment policy, saying, but Zondo is just a judge. He's not a court. Of, you know, it's just a, it's just a um, commission. It's not a court of law. And you think to yourself, wow. Yeah. Mm. Same same thing. Uh, even uh, the, the spokesperson of the ANC mm. said the same thing about uh, the recommendations. He said, as a party, we need to defend ourselves. Uh, we need to not okay. only just accept what is written. Yes, there are certain things where we're wrong and we're going to accept that, but we also need to critically look at it and defend ourselves, which it, it shows where the party stands. Like, it's mm. about the ANC and not about how it affects the greater society as well. Carol, do you think uh, President Ramaphosa, when he opens the conference and sets the tone for what the discussions should be, uh, will, will you know, give any indication of where he stands in relation to some of these controversial findings of the Zondo Commission and recommendations thereof? I think that um, the, the way that I, I imagine Ramaphosa and, and others are going to manage the Zondo Commission findings is, is in the way they manage corruption now which as we know is really, really inadequate. So and everyone smoke and a lot of smoke and mirrors. Yeah, and, and everyone must go to the Integrity Commission. You know, people must present to the Integrity Commission, which we know is not going to um, mean anything because the, 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 the findings are not binding. Mm. Um, and then they will just let, they will just wait and wait and let, if anything comes out of the NPA, then, 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 then that will happen. But, Can but I no, stop you big, no big mm. bang, I don't expect. Can I step, stop you with thought and ask you this question? There is an assertion that Ramaphosa is outsourcing his political battles to to decisions by by prosecutors. Well, he, well, the whole ANC is because they've outsourced them because you know they they, they have disciplinary committees and uh, in 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 the ANC and I remember Judge um, Zonda just like could not understand this you know he said like in any organization if someone behaves badly breaks the law does it something wrong you discipline them why don't you do it in the ANC yeah. and and the president just couldn't explain it but but that is the reality so yes they don't they've outsourced it all and, and if you are the unlucky guy yeah. who gets or woman who gets caught by the NPA and actually prosecuted then 
then okay, then your game's up. And you're really unlucky because the NPA has you're not very been. You're very unlucky. <laughs> you're very unlucky. And the reason for that is no one wants to take responsibility. No one wants to. No one wants to be the person who cracks the whip. Yeah. Uh, Cyril doesn't want to do it. The secretary. Yeah. No one wants to be the that guy who says. Uh, up until here, no more. No one wants to be the person that says, look, your behavior puts the party into disrepute, it's unacceptable, and we are now going to sanction, discipline, or whatever the case may but be. But who has the moral high ground to do that, given the fact that when you look at the Zonda report, that whole ANC is implicated? Well, look, the ANC is in trouble. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a corrupt organization from, from top to bottom. The, the whole Zonda report, and we've had those reports here, those big black volumes, is an absolute indictment on the way in which the ANC govern. It's an absolute indictment on the way in which they approach governance and approach ethics. I mean, no one wants to. No one wants to uh, do the uh, do the right thing in terms of the law or of uh, you know revolutionary morality that they that they uh, espouse that they claim to espouse. So I mean, the problem with Ramaphosa Pause is he should have moved in those first six months. Uh, after he became president, he should have done, uh, he should have used the political capital to use the Americanism that he had. Mm. But he didn't, because the, the overriding um, uh, 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 aim or thing that they want to achieve, or what, what Ramaphosa wants to achieve, is this mythical thing called unity, party unity uh, at all costs. Now, party unity at all costs means that it will be at the, uh, it, it means that the national interest will not trump party interest. Mm. Uh, it will happen at the policy conference and it will happen at the national electoral conference at the end of the year again. Mm. Um, for, for Cyril Ramaphosa and the ANC leadership, national interest uh, is always subservient to party unity and the interests of the party. So we won't see people being hauled. You know, we'll, we'll perhaps see some token cases go to the Integrity Commission. You know, that will be appealed. Uh, the Stalingrad uh, tactics will be followed. As we've seen, is, is, is that's the culture inside of the ANC. Mm. So, I mean, if we shouldn't expect the ANC to respond uh, uh, in any other different way than we've seen recently them respond to the Zondo Commission. I think the high water mark of taking responsibility was when the president, and he should get credit for it, mm. appeared in front of the Zondo Commission. Mm. But even there, like Carol said, you know, questions were put to him which he couldn't answer. Uh, the pushback since the Zondo report was released about cater deployment was quite remarkable. I mean, they, they're reviewing it in the high court. Um, they, they want to keep that system intact, you know, and there's a strong argument to be made like Zondo did. And, you know, the Zondo report, um, there's a lot of criticism against the Zondo report, but the part in the report which speaks to cater deployment was, and, and remember Zondo is a labor, he was yeah. a labor lawyer and a, a labor court judge. You know, that's rooted in law. Um, that the, the arguments put forward by Zona was very, very strong. So, I mean, and, and, and that's the cornerstone of, of, of grand corruption as we've seen it develop over the last decade. And when you see, mm. and when you hear what, what we've heard at the NC Kazanian conference, you, you, you almost see there's no effort to, 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 to soundly uh, object to the findings of, of, of the Zonda Commission and, 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 and simply uh, just dismiss it, all of it, as Zondo must decide whether he's a judge or a politician. Mm -hmm. And I mean, these type of, these type of, uh, of, of, of um, political rhetoric scares me because you heard it in 2007 around scorpions, for example, mm -hmm. where there was no mm -hmm. real thinking around mm -hmm. um, the need for an elite uh, 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 corruption busting uh, 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 law enforcement. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was a simple, uh, you know, you, 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 you're coming, you're chasing after politicians, therefore you must, you must, you must go. And I think that, the, the, that it's worrying that you're not even having this kind of there isn't this facade at least that exists to say okay we'll mull over it maybe Look, there's we'll no change. real urgency guys I don't, there's, there's yeah. no real urgency from the ANC to to really engage with the Zonda report's uh, findings um, you know that from I remember very well in that first couple of weeks of Zondo sitting in was it 2018 2019 um, you know ZZ Cord was sitting at the back and admonishing admonishing journalists um, when when journalists asked him questions about the ANC's role always saying it's not the ANC on trial this is not about us this is about individuals the state has become the ANC and the ANC has become the state that was the whole idea behind Katie deployment mm. and about uh, uh, the way in which they saw the role of the state mm. um, and 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 there's a refusal for them to take responsibility and a refusal by the president frankly mm. um, but he is a creature of 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 you know he, he 
he, he won't interfere in, 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 in the execution of justice. He won't interfere in the NPA like Jacob Zuma did. And that is, you know, so, you know, you're right. And I forget who said, you know, was it you who said, Carol, that they uh, uh, outsourced a lot of their functions. In a sense, that's the only thing that he can do. You know, the NPA and the Hawks and the police need to do their job as well. But we know the effects of state capture meant that the NPA is an organization that Shamila Batoy pretty much has to build up from the ground again. Um, and we know the capacity of the Hawks has been decimated, the same with the police. Um, so it's easy for Ramaphosa to say, look, we're waiting for the NPA to move. I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, politically, you have some responsibility. But I mean, you, you see, you see a, a, a president uh, almost uh, you know, accepting um, uh, of his opponents in a way that you didn't see Zuma being tolerating to, 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 to his political opponents. I mean, think about what happened this last weekend. I could not imagine another scenario where, I mean, you know, in the Zuma years, Gauteng used to be a no-go area for mm. Zuma, uh, you know, from 2013 or so. And, and it was very much known that that's a no-go zone for him, and he wouldn't subject himself to that level of, of, of um, booing or, 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 or embarrassment. But, but Ramaphosa, after the embarrassing loss uh, um, uh, by his faction, in the KwaZulu Natal conference, after much to toing and froing, shows up. He's mm -hmm. booed. You know, people are singing Wenze and Zuma in his presence. Mm -hmm. Then goes on stage and decides to not be, uh, uh, you know, uh, to crack the whip in any way, but to suck up mm -hmm. to the people who are uh, uh, his opponents. And, and, and they say that this is his master stroke, coming from his days in, in, in the unions, mm -hmm. where, you, where you suck up to people to win them over. And then, but again, the, the opposite side of this is that you want the buy-in of criminals, yeah. <laughs> you know, to, to put it <laughs> as simple as that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and so, so, how much has that worked out for him, that, that, that extending the olive branch to people who are literally working in earnest to uh, uh, topple you? It, it can only go uh, so far um, because all of this filters down to the delegates themselves. Um, if they see the president sulking up to criminals, that's why the delegates also vote for people like Zandile Kumete, like um, Mandla Sivi in, in um, Bumalanga. So that also affects the quality of leadership that we have in the party itself because they think if the president is doing this, then we can also do that. Um, and just um, on a side note, when um, delegates were singing Wenze Nuzuma, um, some journalists were saying he should have brought the state <laughs> capture report and pointed at the state capture report. That's because exactly what is a lot. Did. Yes, there is a lot that he has done. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't also suck up to people who are asking Wenze Nuzuma after all that has been revealed about him. So that's mm -hmm. why um, what happened in KZN is, is shocking, um, to say the least. Um, but in the, the sense that you don't have a president, as, even, at the, even as politically strong as he is in terms of securing a second term, asserting his, whatever his vision is, onto yeah. the party. Yeah, Carol? you don't, you don't. And, and, that's, and that's again be the, been the problem, and I think... I think that um, he's yeah he's timid. He 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 lacks. He, he many people say he lacks courage. I, I believe he lacks courage. But I mean, this the, these are uh, things that we brought up five years ago about about the, the style and or maybe even four years ago in in the you know removal of former president Jacob Zuma. And there was always this this counter argument that it's part of this long plan. Exactly. And and the long plan was supposed to culminate right now, right? Mm -hmm. So at this this policy conference was supposed to be the culmination of this the, 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 the this lo this long game, this Ramaphosa mm -hmm. long game of um I you know I appease my uh, detractors to to mm -hmm. push forward all of these reforms. Where is the dividends of that, Peter? Yeah. Look, okay. it's, it's extremely complicated, this. You know, understanding Ramaphosa's personality, understanding the presidency, and it's understanding what he's done. The, the, the state that, or the government that he inherited in 2018 was completely dysfunctional. We know that. You know, certain institutions, SARS, uh, the National Prosecu Prosecuting Authority, we did mention. So, uh, you know, he instituted uh, commissions of inquiry into SARS, into, into uh, the NPA, obviously, into the PIC, for example. Um, he changed the leadership at SARS, at the NPA very quickly. 
Um, we remember th there was a very quick cabinet reshuffle immediately after he became president in 2018 where people like David Maslova and others were removed from cabinet and 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 yeah. I think at that stage his advisor's argument was that let's let's get through to the general election of 2019 um, let's get a new mandate from the electorate um, uh, and then the president will be able to move we, we were also told then that remember he only won with a margin of what was it 179 178 votes or something like that so he cannot move too quickly too too quickly um, and 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 in 2018, 19 at least, I remember um, the long game was the story. Let's get to the election and then he'll start moving and ramping up pressure. But did that happen after 2019? No, it didn't. Um, Can we all agree to that? <laughs> yeah, no. You you know? I think we all agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And, and, and Carol mentioned the economy. I mean, what has he done um, to, 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 to get the economy moving again? Yes, they were, the pandemic was there. But the pandemic hit the, the whole world. Some countries emerged from a pandemic much stronger than we did. Did, did, did Ramaphosa actually um, show the urgency that I think this country needs over the last couple of years um, to improve the economic environment, to improve uh, access to social services, um, to improve the basic uh, 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 services that South Africans need mm -hmm. to function. Mm -hmm. um, ESCOM is certainly the biggest indictment on his record, uh, I think, of all. I mean, he was, he was put in charge of the ESCOM war room in 2012-14, Carol, um, exactly. as deputy president. What happened after then, you know? Yeah. So, so there are... A, if you look at the at the ledger on the debit and the credit side, you know the debit side is certainly much heavier than the credit mm -hmm. side. Um, and I and I agree with Carol. You know the the gradualist sort of approach that he took, we simply cannot afford it anymore. And, 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 and the lack of courage, but it's a lack of courage. It's a lack of courage, right? lack of courage yeah. but but the lack of courage means that he's trying to keep everyone in the tent. And you mm -hmm. spoke about criminals. I mean, you need to cut off the criminal ele elements mm -hmm. somewhere along the line. You need to yeah. say somewhere, look, mm -hmm. we might the ANC might take a political hit. Uh, at the ballot box somewhere, but in the long term, it will be good for party and country if I do A, B, and C. Mm. But we never really saw that. And the, uh, and the, uh, uh, another problem, you know, and as working journalists, the guy is very inaccessible. You know, we don't know, we don't really know what he thinks, mm. what his frustrations are. Mr. President, why did you not move quicker on ESCOM in 2019 when A, B, and C happened? Mm. We simply don't know. We are, uh, you know, we, we, you know Sometimes so I think it's better, Carol. He's, Sometimes he's I think it's better to, good to watch from the outside yeah. because, you know, at some stage you need to believe people when they say, this is who I am and this yeah. is what I'm doing, mm. rather than what they tell you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I think it's enormously frustrating. I think we all went into his presidency or moved from the post-Zuma era, which was a, you know, we shouldn't forget what mm. a what abs absolutely mm. decrepit period of time it was, where institutions were captured, where, you know, money was literally being carted out from the country by crooks and, and, and networks. So we aren't there anymore. But I think the frustration among South Africans is that we, we're supposed to be in a much better position mm -hmm. now um, mm -hmm. than, than, than we are. Yeah, look, I, I just want to pick up on, on this yes, point about sure. um, the mess he, he inherited and the pandemic. And yes, those were like, you know, huge constraints. And, and, so, and so a critic might say, well, what could he have done? We had a pandemic. But I think what, what he could have done is, is he could have had put a, a competent cabinet in place. Mm -hmm because then you would have found the energy and the electricity and Absolutely. so on moving, okay? Mm -hmm. And you could have put uh, c com competent government officials in place. There's been huge reluctance mm -hmm. to remove any of those mm -hmm. people out, even in his own office. Mm -hmm. There are people sitting there who are literally opposed to him, mm -hmm. his agenda. So, so I think, you know, I don't know how much longer they're gonna go on with this, this kind of a cabinet, this kind of a, civil leadership of the civil service but it's killing the country mm. and and it's going to kill them at the at the ballot box mm. and i mean if, if you look internally junior into the anc itself in the last five years he did not make significant strides uh, to strides to to, to to repurpose the party to put his people people mm. who are aligned to his mm. thinking mm. in you know that that rebuilding of the ground up and so he's a victim of what was already there of with all its tentacles yeah. to zuma or all its tentacles to this anti-reform agenda. So even yes, why, while, while Oscar Maboyani might give him a second term in winning the Eastern Cape, that comes with a poison chalice. Mm -hmm. When, when uh, Limpopo, mm. Stanley Matabata wins in Limpopo and that gives him a ticket for a second term, it comes with a VBS poison chalice. Poison chalice yeah. The same thing other places in the country. And so for me, it's again, he's going to be the victim of the people that elect him and he is not 
the the master of his own destiny, if you like. Mm, you're Very right. Very well put, yes. So mm. he, he definitely has to please these people. Like w what you're saying about uh, Limpopo right now, uh, he's at the mercy of Limpopo. Because right now Limpopo is saying, let's scrap, step aside, and literally this is... But it's the duality that exists. So in Limpopo, they're supporting yes. him, but, but they're they supporting him on a <laughs> ticket of his opponents. Yeah. Yes. That's the problem. Yeah. So they're saying you need to deal away with this because we know um, they want um, Denim Caesar to come back. So, <laughs> so his second term is on the back of everything he sought to, to remove. remove. To remove. Mm. Yes, that's true. And also some people are saying um, this also might benefit him. Um, because of the palapala pala charges, if he is initially charged, mm -hmm. if he is charged before the conference mm -hmm. and the step aside rule is removed, then he also stands to benefit. Mm -hmm. So let, let, let's talk about this palapala pala thing, uh, uh, Peter. For me, when I look at it, let, let's not talk about how many millions and your your, your 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 team has done incredible reporting about girls that have been bored <laughs> and fancy cars. But but the point is, for me, the palapala pala scandal takes Cyril Ramaphosa off a moral high ground and puts him in the mud where pigs are fighting of while you have digital vibes, I have, uh, you know, I have digital vibes, you have palapala. Pala. While I have busasa, you have palapala. Pala. And so it kind of makes everybody equal yeah. in this. So no one now has this moral high ground to say reform of the party is this because I have accusations, you have ac accusations. And so we all one and the same. And the thing is, when you're in a fight with pigs, everybody's dirty at the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, look, uh, Batabili Lamini's famous quote about small and yana skeletons <laughs> now comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, everyone has them. Mm -hmm. um, but what it, what it unfortunately from Ramaphosa's perspective did was expose him to investigations by the public protector, for example. We know how those investigations are often used as proxies for, for, for political battle. But this is us not dis dismissing the accusations no, faced against No, what I'm saying it. is it, it pulls him into that space. So right. now he's being exposed. There is a police investigation. There is a Hawks investigation. Just like Jordan invest Keys at this point. It's, and, and, and who knows what happens behind closed doors. Yeah. We've been trying for weeks and weeks and weeks to get access to some form of a docket somewhere to, exa to understand exactly what, 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 what is going on. What has not helped him either is, is, is his lack of... Of, of, of clarity about the matter. He hasn't been forthright saying, you know, this is, this is what happened. It was $500,000 for A, B, and C. He has been very um, standoffish about this whole issue because he knows it will hurt him. And in our political climate, our political environment, where you've got a lot of different actors um, who might not seem linked to each other, um, you know, they use this against him. So, so Arthur Fraser, who we know has files on pretty much everyone, um, was a, was an absolute key player here. And, and, and that's another mistake mm. that Ramaphosa made. He knew that Arthur Fraser, he knew where Arthur Fraser's loyalties lie, uh, uh, lay when, when, when he shifted him from SSA to, uh, to correctional services. And what happened there? I mean, Arthur Fraser was the guy who, who uh, approved medical parole for Jacob Zuma. Against um, the advice of the medical parole. And, 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 and look, and, and, and Ramaphosa's lack of political ruthlessness is going to cost him. The fact that he, from the very beginning, um, put the unity project at the front and center of his political project will cost him. I mean, you refer to Stan Matabata in, in Limpopo and, and, and Danny M. Caesar. I mean, I mean Danny M. Caesar is, is part of the VBS network, and now he's going to become uh, a significant player in the ANC. And that's because Cyril Ramaphosa, from, from the beginning, um, was very reluctant to wield the rapier or the axe or the broadsword mm. to try and clean house. He didn't do so and it's going to, it's going to bite him uh, come December, or it could. The mm. one consideration that comes up, Carol and Junior, you both can opine it, is that the one thing the ANC can successfully do, as much as they kill each other, <laughs> quite literally, yeah, quite literally. is that they unite, again, uh, unite around the threat of existence. Mm. And mm. so you'll <laughs> see uh, that in an election campaign, for example, yes, there'll be all of sorts of fighting and all sorts of, of whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, when, it's, when they need to show up to, to get people to vote for them, they would. Mm. And so how much of the second term is centered or, or, the, or, or the possibility of the uh, second term for Ramaphosa is simply that to say, 
And, 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 and I'm not by no means making the assertion that he will go uncontested. Mm. I don't think we are there yet whether he will be contested by Zuelim Kize or not. But the point is that I'm making is that a policy conference like this could be, yes, have those characterizations of proxy fights around step aside, whatever. But they also could be this kind of boring c consideration that we have to say the right things because we are threat in the 2024 polls. I think there's too much at stake to say the right thing for, for those people who are charged uh. and, and those people who will lose out on that, on that five-year opportunity to, you know, to, to get elected. So um, I, I, I think, unfortunately, you know, the, 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 the keeping things nice for the public and for <laughs> investors and so on is not something they're going to be able to do because, the, um, you know, there's too much at stake. And that has always been the case is that you've had individuals within the ANC who's, who are so bent on their own self-interest that, that they, uh, they, they will don't mind destroying the organization in the process. So I think, you know, I, I don't think that's going to be nicely, nicely. Um, but you know, the one thing about this um, keeping things nice um, in terms of the policy documents are some of the policies that they are basically borrowing from opposition parties. Mm. Um, the ANC is now speaking strongly about migration because all of these smaller parties are coming up and making migration, immigration um, a big topic. Mm. So now they are also... With the xenophobic undertone. Yes, with the xenophobic mm. undertone. But they know if they don't talk about it, then other parties are going to jump on it and mm. they're going to get a lot of support over that. So now the ANC is also putting it in their mm. discussion documents and making it um, something that is big. Um, the Women's League are also pushing for uh, chemical castration for um, sure. individuals which is all populist, Which right? is all yeah. populist. So yeah. those are some of the populist things that they're yeah. going to use just to ensure that the ANC gets a second term. Yeah. So they can all agree on mm. some of those uh, issues that will not affect their mm. contestation for uh, positions. Yeah, yeah. Look, 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 the ANC is, is, is always quite very in touch with what the electorate um, are thinking yeah, and exactly. saying. Yeah. Yeah. They know exactly, they know exactly that people are unhappy about yeah. the level of, of illegal migration. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I, I do believe that as a government, yeah, you actually can't allow, no, no country in the world allows that, this kind of illegal migration, but yeah. So they, they know which issues they've got, to, they've got to address, but on the corruption issue, which really, really, Matters. people really are upset by it. Yeah. They, they, they struggle mm. because of the self-interest versus mm. the, the bigger picture, we need votes 2024, you know? But, but, but talking about votes, if you look at those discussion documents, there was, for me, there was a, a real, ideological bankruptcy in understanding where we're heading to a country uh, 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 electorally. And, and we all can agree sitting here that the future of politics in this country is coalitions. Mm. Whether you agree with coalitions or whether they're effective or ineffective, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, you're not going to have that major block, not for a while at not least. Not for a while. And so, and so what the party is doing then is, is, is not considering um, meaningful what would this really mean for, for them and for us but as the country? What they're doing is they're crying wolf. They, 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 they're they sitting back and saying, uh, you know, these political parties, these smaller political parties just want to kick us out for the sake of... That's what they exist to do. That's what opposition exists to do. It doesn't matter. Mm. Uh, 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 and so so for me, it also shows a lack of preparedness of an inevitability. inevitability. Is that a word? <laughs> 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 that, 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 that will come in 2024 where you can have 12 opposition parties, as you see in some of these metros, you know, 8, 9, mm. 10 small political parties coming together and, and unseating the, the party with the biggest votes, which pro probably will be the ANC. Um, or you could have an alternative where you're going to have to sell your soul to smaller political parties, like is the case of th with the ANC in Etequini, to, to, to still be the, the government. Um, and, and, and coalitions in metros versus coalitions in national government is a completely different ballgame. So I, I, I find there's a little, li a little sense of, you know, a juvenile uh, 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 understanding of what actually is imminent, Carol. Yeah, look, I don't think, yeah, the, the, I don't think the ANC wants to face up to that. And 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 thinking about it, it is actually. So, so we had. This, I think this this next election is going to be as as 
important and dramatic as the 1994 yeah, right. um, transition. And mm. so there's going to be a transition. Um, but, but the problem is this time we can't manage the transition. So last time we managed the transition was all negotiated, there was phased in, mm. you know. And, um, and this is going to be, there's going to be quite a hard landing in 2024 because, because how do you actually um, form this coalition? If, is it like all the small little parties that get together, is, then it becomes very unstable. You leave the ANC out, you go into communities, the a protest erupts, you can't deliver. You know, these are some of the issues that the DA has faced mm. in, in Cape Town is where they, even when they try and do good things, um, the community comes and mm. says, sorry, no, no bus mm. rapid transport system yeah. here, yeah. you know, yeah. gets it out. So um, it's and yeah, then we also have unknown. the problem that yeah. the ANC is 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 diminishing in support, but nothing else is filling that void. You're not having yeah. an uptick of support for opposition yeah. parties and you or one opposition party. And you can't really have the ANC saying now, well, look, we know we're going to lose in 2024. So let's, you know, so, so I know they are involved in these these sort of study trips that are going overseas yeah. to look at coalitions and yeah. so on, which is great. I'm glad. Um, but yeah, they can't really come out with a policy paper and say, look, we know we're going to lose in 2024, so let's uh, make deals. Look, the, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the, the problem that they have, I think, um, is that they, this, this sense of entitlement that they have, that they are going to rule until Christ returns, like yeah. Zuma said, yeah. you know, it's all pervasive, unfortunately. I mean, when you lose, when, you, w w when a political party or a politician or, or someone in political power loses, uh, a sense of civic duty or, or, or a, uh, uh, an overriding um, loyalty to the constitution um, or the national interest, you know, th then I think um, you become like the ANC is now. Conita, you quoted that paragraph in the policy document where it says, you know, smaller parties are ganging up on us. Look, mm -hmm. you need to understand your role in a political system as well. And I think the ANC, because of the, because of the fact that they have been so dominant for almost 30 years, you know, they've become complacent, lethargic. Mm. They've become um, uh, almost too big to fail. They believe that they are too big to fail. And, and no political party is too big to fail. You know, the, the slide that, that we've seen over the last couple of election cycles actually has been quite dramatic. If you consider that in 2009 under, under Thabo Mbeki, they were at 69.69%, yeah. which was quite, quite remarkable. Um, so, so, so I think the problem that they have is that they believe that it is their God-given right to govern or to rule sometimes in certain instances. Um, and that is going to come to an end sometime, some way. Carol's right. You know, you can't exactly come out with a policy paper saying this is how we're going to approach coalitions. Um, but there needs to be, uh, you know, the, the ANC at some stage, they're going to have to reach a point where the national interest and loyalty to the Constitution uh, trumps loyalty to, to Lutuli House and the Freedom Charter, for example. Um, but I mean, that's something you can easily say because you have you have this experience, this new, this novel experience in, in metros, for example, right? So you use that to bring about a discussion around what is it that we as a party, when we negotiate in coalitions. Absolutely. I think that's the better way of doing it. And I yeah. think that they are doing that. I think they are engaging in discussions like that. Um, but yeah, the, the difficulty is, you know, because ultimately in a perfect world, you'd want the two big blocks, you know, the DA mm -hmm. and, and the ANC, to, to occupy the center mm. and, and govern. Mm. But the prospects of that happening are, are, are not good. Mm. Um, and, so, and so you've got a kind of instability mm. very likely. And, um, and Carol, I mean, forward. you come from Cape Town. What's, what's, what's the ANC's track record as an opposition party in the Western Cape and Cape Town? It's, it's horrid. I mean, yeah. they, they simply don't know, um, I think, how to fulfill the role of, of a loyal opposition, for example. I mean, in Cape Town, they've, they've pretty much sunk without trace. Yeah, I know they have. They have really struggled. And, um, and the longer you know, time goes on, they actually, the more they shrink. So, so uh, in my column for, for Friday briefing, News 24 Friday briefing or tomorrow, I make the point that while, while the discussion around policy is going to be something I have to track, there's also a lot of uh, uh, accessory things that I'm going to pay attention to come conference tomorrow. The first thing is song. Um, and, I, and I do believe we're going to get an indication of what the opposition to Ramaphosa will look like mm. through song. Mm. I think that uh, uh, we, you, you've not seen the renewal message or vision for Ramaphosa centered in symbolic catchphrases or, 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 or things that 
bring rally people mm. together, mm. which is why it can, I believe it can be repurposed mm. for any motive. I will also be looking at uh, 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 the, 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 the reception to certain politicians. Mm. What happens when a DD Mabuza enters the room? Mm. For example, is he relevant at all? Mm. Um, the, the, the name, the, you know, the, does, does Jacob Zuma, for example, is he still this elephant in the room at all? Um, and so these are the type of things yeah. that I'm going to watch out. Is there anything that you were looking for uh, when, when, when you go to conference? And you better be at conference early tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I shall be at conference early. Um, but it's just to see what the delegates themselves want because it seems like the delegates are just um, toing and froming. So if one person says this, they just follow that. And what happened in KZN was a good, um, significant moment because that faction that won came from nowhere, basically. Mm -hmm. And they just wanted nothing to do with Sihle. So, it was so it, it, what did they call it? Puma Sihle. Puma Sihle. Like, we just done with you. We don't care. <laughs> it can be anyone. Like, yeah, they could yeah. have just picked anyone from the crowd <laughs> and they would have replaced Sihle. Yeah. So, that's what we're going to be looking at because um, the delegates have a lot of say in this mm. conference. So, it's just to see what um, they're going to be saying. But songs also, you're yeah. right. Uh, songs are going to tell us a lot about how mm. they feel about Ramaphosa mm. because the last time you tried to speak, they were saying, when Zenu Zuma, yeah. So but maybe that could bigger, happen as this well. This is bigger. This is yes. a lot more of his allies from d all of the different of provinces. Yeah. Carol, yeah. what are you looking? Yeah, I think. Well, I think the other thing is, is the credentials report. Mm. You think it's going to be contested? No, I don't. I don't necessarily. No, I don't. That's not what I'm expecting. But yeah. I think that there've been changes since the last conference five five years ago. We in terms of who's the power blocks. Yeah, in terms of the power blocks mm. and the size of the provinces, mm. and and we have supposedly had the electronic membership system, which is supposed to root out fraud. I don't know if anyone thinks it did. But um, but yeah, so so I think that we, we, we you know that's going to be interesting because some, I think the, the kind of size and shapes mm -hmm. um, have 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 changed and 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 it's a numbers game mm -hmm. when it comes to the election of office bearers in December, it's pure numbers. Mm -hmm. Peter, what are you be looking at? I'm looking forward to the report back sessions to see what the di how the discrepancies discrepancies are going to play out between what we hear uh, emerging from the commissions and exactly what they're going to pin down uh, when they when they brief the media. I mean, mm -hmm. stuff like um, uh, whether state capture existed, approach to Zondo, uh, and obviously step aside rule. Those those are the mm -hmm. three big things mm -hmm. um, that I'd be interested in. Well, thank you all for joining me today. We are going to do this um, tomorrow, Friday. Uh, uh, on News 24 as well as Saturday. I think we have a lot to discuss in the, in the, in the coming days. There will be a lot of more interviews with um, politicians, ANC politicians, ANC leaders at the conference on the sidelines of the conference as we unpack uh, this very important moment uh, in the governing party's uh, 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 political calendar and also more importantly, what does this mean for you and I, ordinary South Africans? Thank you for joining us until tomorrow. Goodbye.